we next have a conversation with Dr. Jum Sai from Thailand. In conversation with him is Professor G. Venkatraman. Sai Ram, Dr. Jum Sai, and welcome to the studios of Radio Sai. Yes, Sai Ram. Uh, and uh, I am very happy to hear that you have heard our radio broadcast from various countries. Now it will be the turn of others to hear you uh, yes. speaking on Radio Sai. I have a number of things to ask you. So maybe I will ask my standard opening question, especially of people who are not very familiar to our listeners. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you happened to come to Swami? Well, it's not how I came to mm-hmm. Swami, but how Swami caught hold of me. <laughs> of course, uh, <laughs> that is always the case. He always pulls the string. <laughs> yes. But in a purely worldly sense, we think we have come to Swami. Okay, whichever way it is. You see, even before I knew about Swami, yes, already Swami has made appearance um, to my mother. Yes, uh, so you described it in Buddha yes. Purnima. In fact, we broadcast it and I heard it on the radio. Oh, you did day. already? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so he came during the war time. Yes. And saved all of us uh, from there bombing. There was bombing in Thailand. Bombing in Thailand, yes. Because at first we were invaded by Japan, Japan. and then later on by the Allies. Because oh, I see. So we were got occupied. it both ways. <laughs> we got both ways. Um, in any case, um, it was proved and... Uh, that Swami actually came because he said that himself. In which year was that? Uh, the year that Swami appeared in Thailand. Mm-hmm. Uh, it must have been around 1940, 41, somewhere around it's there. It's amazing. He was a 14-year-old boy in physical yes. frame. He just yes. declared he was Sai Baba. Yes, it's about that time that he came. When your mother saw him, what was his appearance? How old did he appear at that time? Well, he seemed to be a young man. Young man. Yes, very young, young man. Um, and my mother described him as someone who looks like a monk, but not a monk. I see. Yeah. In later years, did you have any chance to show photograph of Swami to your mother? Did she recognize the form? Well, I, I didn't know Swami. No, much later after you uh, came. Well, by that time, mm. uh, I, when, when I knew Swami... Mm. I immediately talked to my mother about it, but my mother did not recognize oh, that Swami was the same person as that young man. Okay, so, um, but my mother accepted him immediately, and we we came together for the first time. Anyway, I, I like to tell you how I came. Yes. Um, this was uh, just over twenty years ago. Twenty years ago in Thailand. Um, the first few people uh, came to put a party, mm-hmm. uh, Thai people. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, there were Indians and there were other nationalities who have come. From but, Thailand. From Thailand, but mm-hmm. we don't hear very much about it until a very pom- prominent Thai Buddhist mm. came and he was really transformed by Swami. Mm-hmm. He went back and he started to talk about Swami mm-hmm. and translated books into Thai language. Uh, then he came to me because he is a friend of mine. He said, would you like to go and see Swami? Mm-hmm. I said, well, if he's so great, mm. then he better call me. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't go. Well, that put a challenge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, on the same day mm. as that challenge, I was sitting all alone. Suddenly, I felt there was a lot of light and energy entering my body. And I was shaking and shaking. Daytime. Yes, it was daytime. And I was shaking uh, and I was crying. Tears were coming out. Um, it's really, but I felt very peaceful. So I thought, well, maybe this is the call. I went to my mother. I mm-hmm. told her, would you like to go with me? Mm-hmm. And she said, yes. So we came. And um, that was in 1982, mm-hmm. um, doing the birthday festival Mm -hmm. and of course there's a huge crowd I couldn't get anywhere near I didn't know my way in or out at that time and Swami came out for darshan I was outside the enclosure um, and he glanced in my direction suddenly I felt the same light and energy Mm -hmm. that entered my body and I was crying and crying and crying so I knew that that was the call he did make that call 
now uh, uh, you are a buddhist yes and uh, i don't know whether i'm right but i believe there are people who say that buddhism does not accept god is that really correct uh, you know there is some confusion maybe but maybe you could set the record straight buddhism does not talk about god okay it okay. doesn't say that um, it doesn't talk does about not god. accept god okay that's a big difference it, it doesn't talk about god uh, because the buddha will say you will find out okay but so, you have to go within and then, and then you will find out the answer the, there is a reason why i asked that question and then that is simply whether you felt there was a contradiction in accepting swami and also staying by your religion there was no contradiction for me there was no yes. no contradiction obviously if you say mm-hmm. that it doesn't talk about god and lets you discover him yes. all by yourself there is no contradiction that's correct but on the other hand you are also a scientist and uh, one who has achieved a lot of reputation scientists have a lot of problem with god did you have any problem with god <laughs> rather accepting god well um, i started in a different way mm-hmm. in that i came to spirituality before i actually started to study in universities okay so at the age of 15 i started to practice meditation mm-hmm. and from there i started to study the the, the works of uh, vivekananda oh, yogananda ramakrishna and um, uh, many of the indian saints um and that what was, was it that attracted you to those uh, works of those saints well uh, because i started to study uh, meditation mm-hmm. and practice meditation mm-hmm. um that started my search i wanted to know more about my own life mm-hmm. who am i why okay. am i here um uh, where am i going all these questions were in my mind already when i was um, a late teenager and um so i started my search i want to know the answers i looked for many teachers uh, i was in england at that time mm-hmm. um attending a public school in 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 england um and i went from one person to another trying to search for the answers uh but then i had to study on my own really okay, to find so out okay so obviously you were a marked man right from then <laughs> talking of this uh, inquiry uh, allow me to mention what stephen Hawk- hawking says towards the end of his book uh, the, he has written a best seller dealing with time and towards the end of that he says uh, we after so many centuries of exploration we are still left wondering about the nature of the universe the purpose of the universe the purpose of man and things like that yes after so much. so it is sobering to think that even they have given their hands thrown their hands up But well, you have for gone in the right direction and I suppose you don't have those problems with they have. <laughs> well because I started with these questions about my myself about who am I why am I here and so on uh then I applied scientific methods in in the investigation. So I did a lot of experiments. Oh yes, uh, Vedanta is all about scientific yes. inquiries. So in fact it it fitted in very well but I had to start in the right direction first. <laughs> yes. Incidentally Ramakrishna says that uh, you must know what the creator first and then about creation otherwise it's like putting the cart before the horse <laughs> right correct yes <laughs> okay now let me come to your current activities in work which is in the field of education you've been in it for many many years now i've seen you here in Prasanthi Nilayam uh, participating organizing running so many courses and 20th of november has now become ehv day thanks to you what i would like to ask you is to tell very briefly first to our listeners what is ehv in simple terms and what you are doing in thailand and how later on how the movement has spread across the world because very few people really know much about it and uh, you are the best person to tell us about it well regarding ehv it stands for education in human values of course um however swami uh, has been telling us more about educare now mm. um so we have the five human values of truth right conduct peace 
love and non-violence. So these are the basic five human values. However, Swami says you cannot teach human values. It has to be brought out. So that is educare. It has to be brought out uh, from within the child or the uh, the learner. Um, so now the whole movement is changing towards the educare. Now, before this, before Swami really put a stress on, on educare, we've been teaching EHV. We've been te- teaching human values. Um, that is, uh, we have a set format where we choose the value that we want to teach and then we go through the five techniques uh, using prayers, meditation, um, storytelling. What's the age group singing. you're uh, aiming at? Uh, we have uh, three main groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first group is really uh, five to to nine, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then the second group will be 10 uh, to 13 Mm-hmm. And then fourteen to sixteen, uh, somewhere around there, it, mm-hmm. it, you, you can vary so a little it, bit. Uh, it overlaps with the teenagers. Yes, that that's correct. Um, and then later on, we added the um, the adult training uh, to EHV as well, to so that we have a continuation from the age of sixteen upwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that is really Balvikas. Uh, where we train mostly children of devotees. Um, however, um, we decided that it's time that we go to the public, mm-hmm. that we go to schools, colleges, and universities. Mm-hmm. Um, so finally, the meeting of central coordinators here decided to set up the Institute of Satyasai Education. Now, that is a very big step because... That happened in which year? Uh, 1997. So, five years ago. So, five years ago. Mm-hmm. Now, when that was set up, the emphasis is no longer on devotees. Naturally. It is going into formal education, into schools, colleges, and universities. And the institute um, has to set up model schools mm-hmm. uh, in conjunction with training of teachers uh, because teachers, when you train, they want to see something that exists, something that uses uh, the um, educare or education in human values. Um, and so we started to uh, promote setting up of such a size. In these schools. five years, how many people have you trained, roughly? Uh, from the institute itself, uh, we train some 50,000 teachers in Thailand alone. And then 50,000 50, teachers? yes, in Thailand. What is the duration of the training? Uh, one or two days. We don't, oh, okay. we don't take so long. Okay. Because but uh, is that uh, enough, one or two days, you know, to orient them to something like this? You see, all you need to do is to inspire them. Mm-hmm. If you cannot inspire them, you can take a week or 10 days. It doesn't work. Well, it's a it terrific job if you have inspired 50,000 people. So, well, uh, we... we don't expect that all 50,000 <laughs> nice. will be inspired, but we do expect some 20% or so Even will be inspired. Even that is a large number. You, you sustain them with some teaching aids and material and things like that? What we do is we have books which we give out. Okay, so they take charge. something material. We, we give them uh, free of charge actually to, mm-hmm. to everyone when we train teachers. And these teachers address all these age groups from 5 to 16? No, um, they are professional teachers. Yes, and therefore, they're already in schools. True, or but colleges. they'll be teaching children of various ages. Yes. So it depends on where, what, where they are. Where so they, they are. may be dealing with children of one of these three age groups. Yes. Uh, the important part of, of this training is that teachers will learn to integrate values in mm-hmm. all subjects. So, in other words, they don't have to change the curriculum. Naturally. They use the same curriculum, but. They had learned to integrate values. Values will be an integral part of everything that they do in the school. Um, and we just need to motivate them. We just need to inspire them because they're already professional teachers. Do you they, maintain any contacts with these teachers and get feedback from them? Um, we invite them to come and see a such a size school because mm-hmm. that's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they come 
many of them will come. Those who are inspired certainly will come, mm-hmm. and they'll visit, they'll see, and they're very much moved uh, by what they see in a such a size school because the atmosphere is completely different from other schools. Uh, other public schools. Are you for hopeful of making some kind of an impact on the children and the youth of Thailand through this? Um, certainly, the the uh, the, te- the children in the Satya Sai schools are really transformed. They have changed That's so much. That's true, but uh, through this uh, larger ESP program, that is really the one that reaches out to the entire yes. country, and we very anxiously. Li- Want some results there too? Well, what is happening is that we try to influence um, the lawmakers as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to influence all the teachers to make use of that in their own school. We train administrators of of schools, and we try to train the whole school, uh, all the teachers. If we train only three or four from no, each naturally. school, it doesn't work. So, Apart from teachers from Thailand who have been trained in your uh, institute, short-term course, one day, two day, you also have long-term courses for yes. teachers from various countries, don't you? So we we have become a sort of center for training of teachers from mm. all over the world. Oh, I see. Um, we have applications from all continents of the world to come and and. I see. Of course, all these people receiving their yes. diplomas. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, how uh, many of them have you trained? Uh, we've trained some 300, 300. Uh, so And far. what is the duration of the course? Uh, the course vary from two and a half months to six months to one year. I see. Depending on uh, honorary diploma or advanced diploma. If so it's maximum advanced, is one year? Uh, yes, maximum is one, is one year. Yeah. Uh, but many will request to stay on for further training and we accept them to continue after their advanced diploma. You, you, are you keeping in touch with these 500 North people? Who oh, are the gone? 300, we are always in touch. Uh, we, and are they happy? Are they able to produce uh, some results in wherever they have gone? Uh, many uh, are certainly very active mm-hmm. in the organization with education. A lot of them are working in such a size schools as teachers in such a size schools. You were talking about lawmakers. Are the lawmakers lending you an ear, shall I say? Well, uh, I'll tell you the secret. <laughs> Good. I had to become an MP oh. myself. <laughs> as they see. say in America, if you can, lick him, join him. <laughs> yes. So I was elected three times as a member of parliament in Thailand. Mm-hmm. And I was in all education uh, work within the the um, parliament, um, always in house committees for education and so on, and that helped a great deal to influence uh, the laws. And in fact, we now have been able to put out a new law uh, uh, back uh, two years ago, mm-hmm. um, and this law, education law, now says that values must be an integral part of all subjects. Um, so this is a great help in Thailand because uh, there's great demand now for training because uh, they don't know what how, how to apply the law uh, in their schools. So they came to us because we were the originator really uh, um, in Thailand. And um, therefore, that's why we're, we're training so many teachers. Uh, almost weekly we have... We have to travel here and there throughout Thailand and give training. Allow me to ask a somewhat difficult question at this point. One of the things I am rather worried about is the following. It is all well for us to try and tell young children, students about values and so on. We may do it with the best of motives in the best possible way. But a practical problem is that many of these students are subjected to two very powerful opposing forces, opposed to us, that is. One is the media, other is peer pressure. Of course, the media works through the peers to its advantage. Yes. So how do you get across the message to these people who who might be reluctant listeners, who may not be willing to accept what is really good for them? You might, if you have some good tips, uh, I think it will be very useful to share it with many of your listeners who might be teachers. Um, well, we are getting across to teachers. Mm. This is not too difficult because 
already teachers uh, are thinking in that yes, line. Teachers, of course, but the teachers must get across to schools. At least twenty twenty five percent must accept what the teacher says. Um, yes, the they're getting across to the students is not so difficult. Is that right? It That's depends on the teachers. You uh-huh. see, if the teachers are convinced, and if they really believe in this program, and they. Uh, are an example. This is very important that they must be an example. They must express values in their own life. Okay, then it's easy to transfer to the children. That's a very good point. I've not heard anyone say that. What you're saying is you can overcome any skepticism with example. Yes. If the teacher becomes a role model, it's much easier to convey. Correct. Yes. I think uh, you have got a real point there, which uh, is not being stressed enough. You know, with all our uh, background, we were able to ex- accept great leaders like Gandhi because he was a role model, as Correct, simple as yes. that. So the long and short of it is any teacher training program must focus on making the teacher into a role model. Is that what you would say? Yes. There must be a role model for the te- for the children to emulate. That is very interesting. Now, this brings me to another question. Not really a question. I want your comments on this. The other day when you were speaking before the yes. Divine Discourse, you made a remark which disturbed me very much, not what you said. <laughs> you were referring to something that is happening somewhere. You said that according to law in the United States, it is not permitted to teach values in schools. I mean, if that is true, that is something very serious. Would you, wouldn't you say so? You see, the the um, uh, Amendment 1 of the Constitution of the United States. Yes. Um, so freedom of speech and all that yes, sort of thing. It, it separates the church and the... No, we are not talking uh, about church here. Yes, but they consider human values as uh, religious values. And... Um, even then, uh, then why do they ask them to uh, in Senate hearings ask people to speak the truth? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know they that take you true. to task if you. Sp- if you sp- <laughs> uh, but the argument that is given by by many people in the United States is that uh, values are to be given by parents. It's the job of the parents, not the job of the teachers. Recently, you know, there was a rash of corporate frauds in America. Yes, and true. Uh, I heard. An American professor speak on one of the television channels, which comes on my digital radio as a radio channel. Mm -hmm. He said, whatever happened to the values that we used to teach our students in our business school? Yes. So if you don't have values, you will have corporate fraud. Right. How can you teach values to a 21-year-old young man when you have not taught it to him as a small boy? Yeah, that, that 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 is correct. Isn't there a contradiction here somewhere? Or am I missing something? <laughs> well, it's because there's a lot of frauds now. There's a lot of uh, problems now. It shows <laughs> that values have not really been taught. And the reason is because uh, most schools say it's it's not their business. It's the business of the parents. Okay, they throw it back to the parents. Uh, and because... Uh, there's something in the Constitution. Is it separates. there in the Constitution or is it a Maya that is imagined by these people as if it's in the Constitution? No, the Constitution their... simply s- separates the church from the state. That uh, The state has no no business but with the church. Me, we know of many scientists who don't believe in God, but they believe in truth. The whole of science is based on truth. Right. At least as far as the physical world is concerned. Mm-hmm. So... What's wrong with talking about truth? I can I can't do an experiment and fudge my results. <laughs> I mean, truth is vital. T- so, well, truth is a value. So, what's wrong in teaching about truth? Yes, but when you start to talk about love and uh, other values, so, then, uh, are then we people... supposed to talk about hate? <laughs> <laughs> but people mis- misunderstand what is truth, what is love, um, and. Uh, but I'm shocked. Mm, uh, However, when we, we come to educare, yes. there's no problem anymore. Yes. Because the Constitution of the United States guarantee uh, freedom of expression. So we get the children to express themselves, the values. Then they are... Com- yes, but then uh, cl- you have to provide a trigger. That may be against the so-called law. No, no, we, are, we, uh, we don't tell them about the values. We don't teach values, but we bring it out. How do you bring it out without telling them anything? Um, we ask questions. 
That's we, not against the law. That's not against the law. We can ask questions that in such a situation, what would you do? And then the children will think. They'll But discuss. Tell me, this is a very roundabout way. Why mm. can't the people get back to the senses and say values is needed for our society? Now There's no way to reform. I mean, you might have made a mistake. You can go back. After all, Americans had prohibition. They went back thinking it was not okay. No, but now there is an awakening, and certainly the, a lot of people are talking about bringing back values oh. in education. In America, yes, in America, that is a good sign. Yes, a the, good sign. it's a good sign. Things are moving now towards value education more okay, and thank more. Thank you. That's very good um, news. Uh, because of all the problems, violence in schools, you know, shooting and killing and uh, drugs problems and all kinds of problems uh, within the school, uh, and therefore. People are saying we we need so values. So that means there is a lot of scope for work from our side. Yes, uh, there there was a poll uh, conducted, okay, to to the parents in uh, America. In America, uh -huh. and they asked When the was parents. This? this was um, about a year ago. Okay, and they asked all over the country or in a particular state. It's or a state? Gallup poll, so it's Gallup all over. Poll, the, yes, okay. so uh, the poll simply wanted to, to know whether. Parents want want uh, values to be taught in schools, mm -hmm. and the majority of them said yes. Okay, so this is a very good sign that parents now want schools to teach. Previously, parents said no; it's their job, not not the school job. And schools, therefore, throw it back to the parents. That's and why the parents have, have no time to look yeah, at it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's correct. So now they want schools to to teach values. It's very uh, good to hear that. You see, there is a reason why I asked you all these questions about America. The world tends to follow what America does. That is correct. So uh, it is very important if America sets the right tone, right. then the rest of the world would accept it more easily than otherwise. Yes. How is it in Thailand? I mean, of course, America is a different extreme. But Thailand, do people accept values? Oh, that Or do is, you have problems? No, no problems whatsoever. Mm. Now it's part of the education system. Values are always there mm. in all subjects, so there's there's no problem. And we have that the law, the new education law, so there's no problem. And now we are spreading out in many many countries, and it's well accepted ev everywhere. Uh, Tell us something about this. Uh, uh, Clones of your institute, if I may use that word, which have come up in many other continents. There is an institute for Satisa education, somewhat similar to yours in many other continents. Is it not? Yes. Um, well, we cannot work alone That's in okay. one in one country. Yes. Uh, we need to spread out mm -hmm. um, and delegate the work out, mm. uh, and so we've been. Uh, Asking many countries uh, to start up institutes of such as higher education, one per continent or something like that. Well, at first we were thinking of regional institutes, mm -hmm. where each region will have one. But uh, when a country becomes very strong, then they'll set up their own institutes, and you may have two in the region. That doesn't matter. Like in Africa, we have one in Zambia. Then South Af Africa became very strong. They mm. they have already uh, four or five such as high schools, and um, they they do a lot of work in. in no, I'm talking of uh, institute that trains teachers. Yes. So so because they're of very active. Yes. So they decided to have their own institute, even though there's one almost next door oh, in I Zambia. See. So there are two institutes. There are two institutes now in Africa. Yes. What about North America? Uh, North America, there's nothing at the moment. Okay, uh, because of this problem with uh, teaching values in yes. schools and all that. So, is, uh, Latin is, America. Latin America, we have uh, institutes in Argentina, in Brazil, and now institutes are being set up in Mexico, in uh, Venezuela, Colombia. Oh, so so many. so many many institutes are, are being nice. set up. That's very nice. So South America is very active. They already and in Asia, apart from Thailand, where where do you have? In, in Asia, we have uh, institutes set up in in the Philippines, mm -hmm. um, and uh, if we go a little further south, then of course we have one in Australia, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and uh, we do have institutes that are being set up, like in Japan, 
but they're not full-fledged institute where they don't have uh, courses in diploma, diploma courses, um, but they do train teachers. Um, so they have already arranged uh, national training in uh, three or four times already uh, in, in Japan. There's no penetration in China? Uh, oh, yes, we are working hard in, in China. You remember we had a, a conference here in the year 2000, an in, international conference, yes, um, and there were Chinese educators, really top educators mm-hmm. who were invited, mm-hmm. and they came, mm-hmm. and they were so impressed. Mm-hmm. They went back, and they contacted us to help uh, training teachers, mm-hmm. um, and we have sent... Uh, some of our people from Hong Kong uh, to go and train teachers uh, with with these educators. Um, and it's been very successful. They're very happy. So we're going to continue the work. It looks in, like in China. That China is going to need a lot of it because this oh, yes. uh, development of the economy seems to have produced a very sharp gradient with the very rich and very poor and so on. We hear a lot about it. Yes, um, it's still very much controlled by by the government, yes, so we, we cannot go too quick quickly. Uh, but it is going on because of the conference we had in in Putta Party in the year two thousand. Um, so we have the contacts now. We are working uh, in in China. What about the university level? Um, in Thailand, uh, for example, we are going to be upgrading the institute to offer degree courses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won't call it university. It will simply be an institute and we'll start with one faculty, mm-hmm. faculty of education, mm-hmm. uh, for which we are, we are fairly ready. Um, and other uh, institutes are also thinking of upgrading in the near future. Um, uh, Thailand, we are thinking of starting in the year 2004, uh, South Africa Institute is thinking of starting in the year 2005, mm. uh, simply upgrading and um, and do what they're you know they 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 specialize in. Uh, mostly, it'll be in education, but South Africa is thinking about management and so on mm-hmm. uh, as well. Uh, so, I think that we need to go into university level in order to spread into other universities who are not such as high universities. Um, I know, I understand. I understand. So um, if we start, we have our own experience in inculcating values at the university level, then we can go and talk about it. Otherwise, we can't really train uh, lecturers and academics if we don't do it ourselves. Mm, that's true. Mm. I was uh, speaking to our students and teachers month or month and a half ago and uh, I strongly pleaded that we must uh, become active in developing what I call blended teaching. What is now happening is very often we teach values in some classes and the subjects in some classes. I want these two to be blended seamlessly while teaching the subject. Yes. And this is not very easy, but it can be done. For That is the reason why I was recording an interview with Dr. Safaya. Because what was happening was, while he was telling me about the wonders of the human anatomy, we were, uh, he was really bringing out many important facts that make you take the human body far more seriously and gives you, makes you respect it and you begin to wonder about the divine power that is uh, operating. It completely changes your outlook. And uh, somebody asked me, I don't know, I, I want to sound you out on this. Somebody asked me, how do you do this for children when you teach science? I said, look, if I were dealing with a five or seven year old and I was telling about science, I won't tell about God or anything. I'll just try to make that child become curious and fill the child with a sense of wonder. It's very easy, you know, to make a child wonderstruck. And then after a while, you begin to ask, uh, how come these things are happening? Who put a red beak on a green parrot? (laughs) Swami says. Mm -hmm. And then at some suitable stage later on, you come back to the same question. Then God, then you say, you know, you shouldn't stop there. There are responsibilities. And slowly you elevate the person step by step. So different wavelengths for different age groups, but the theme remains the same. Now, 
The reason I'm mentioning all this is when you do your teacher training, do you attempt to steer them towards this blended teaching? Because many people come and ask me, how do you teach mathematics along with values? You can see, teach this and that separately. That doesn't work. I want you to tell me how you teach mathematics uh, and values together. I can do it in economics. I can do it in certain other subjects, management. How do you do certain subjects like mathematics and physics and all that? But that is becoming increasingly important. Uh, are you giving any thought to these questions? Um, in in our institutes, mm. the training that we give to teachers mm. is, as you say, blended. Very good. Um, um, so it's an integral part of, of all subjects. The values are an in, integral part of all subjects. And um, whether they teach mathematics, science, they must bring out the values. Um now, I believe that values are in, in, inherent already in all subjects. That's true, but uh, uh, we have been trained for so many centuries to think along certain lines. It becomes very difficult to suddenly adapt to this. Well, once teachers know the trick, <laughs> then, then okay. they can Okay, my question is, have you got the trick? <laughs> and if so, would you like to sh share a little bit of it with our listeners? Well, we give uh, various... Uh, ideas to the teachers, get them to think about it. Um, uh, the first thing is that whatever subject they, they study, mm -hmm. they, they learn to apply it to their own life, into their, uh, in everyday life, everyday situation. Um, it must be connected with various situations in real life. Now, if you teach as a separate subject, then it's unconnected. So we have to show that connection with real life. And in real life, you must have values. Values That's are there true. already. Uh, if you use the knowledge for the benefit of others, that's already value. Um, if you show uh, the the usefulness okay. of that so subject. So the essential point is how knowledge can be made use of for the betterment of society. That is and one the of the main things. Yes. That is a very important Yes. Point. So that you prevent misuse of knowledge. But there's always many ways of, of, of bringing in values. But then the, yes. the, the, this is the main objective. Yes. Man, uh, as Confucius said, uh, uh, if uh, knowledge is not applied, it's useless. Something to that right. Correct. effect, I believe he has said. Yes. Now, uh, before we sign off, I would like you to leave the listeners, our listeners, with some thought which they can think about relating to education and values, what would you like to tell our listeners as a parting remark? Life itself is an education. We learn all the time. Every minute we are learning something because we are in interacting with the environment. We have our instruments for learning, the eyes, the ears, the, the smell, the taste, and the five senses are always used to interact with the environment. So through the five senses, we are receiving a lot of information all the time, and we need to process that mm -hmm. um, so that it's useful to uplift our mind um, so that we become a better person. So that is the process of education, how to bring in the values, how to bring the values in the through the five senses. Are uh, you say, am I right in assuming that a better person is one who serves society? Uh, a good person is a person with values. Values, and of course. And of course, they, they do serve their society. They become selfless, and therefore right, they right. work for, for others rather than themselves. So uh, because our life is a learning process, we cannot avoid it. We need to have education. We need to teach everyone how to learn. Um, and that is very important, the learning process which we all need to use in our life. So really, um, when we, we study this, we'll see that values are always there in our learning process because it applies to our own life. Yes. Thank you very much, Sai Ram, and I look Sai forward Ram. to seeing you again sometime later. We can continue from where we have left off today. Thank yes. you once again, Sai Thank Ram. Thank you very much, Sai Ram. <laughs> 